Hello and welcome to ET Edge Insights. We have with us today Deepankar Sanwalka, partner at Grand Thornton Bharat. Hi Deepankar, thank you so much for doing this interview with us. It's lovely having you here today. Thank you very much Dave for having me. Really looking forward to our interaction. And yeah. I think you guys have an excellent platform uh, and to share ideas, it's a fantastic thing. And that's exactly why we thought we'd interview you Deepankar. But before we begin with uh, the topic of today's interview, which is value creation, uh, I wanted our viewers to get to know you a little better. You've been in the business for the last 27 years or more, been a business owner yourself, I believe when you got out of college and uh, you passed your examinations as a certified uh, chartered accountant. Uh, you've worked with a couple of big four companies. You've also uh, dabbled with a fintech prior to joining Grant Thornton. So tell us a little bit about your journey and uh, your experience with Grant Thornton so far. I think so. My professional journey, the way I have always looked at it, is that uh, is one of reinvention. And uh, I started my life as an auditor, uh, did my CA, pretty standard stuff, and then I got onto you know what you call a business ownership sort of a thing, a very entrepreneurial journey. But to be fair, under the ages of of an organization, so I but it was a hundred percent like a business owner. When I set up forensics business in India, so that right. was my first pivot, which happened. Yes, and then uh, so and then second pivot happened when I got into the management roles, and I pivoted to digital uh, transformation. And the third pivot, which happened, was which you said was I came out of consulting and joined a fintech. Yeah, and it was an absolutely different but a wonderful experience. And now back at Grant Thornton. And our goal here, or at least mine and with Vishesh, is trying to build a firm which is the most valued firm by 2030. Absolutely. And uh, given your trajectory and the experience that you've had, you come with so much more than just working in the advisory services space. You know, it takes a lot for a leader to lead an organization. And I have a couple of questions sure. around the topic of leadership. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, my first question is on value creation. In today's competitive business landscape, creating value is paramount. Could you share specific strategies and initiatives your organization has taken to drive value creation for its stakeholders, customers and employees? Yeah, I think so value creation, everyone talks about it. And I think so every organization has a different take to it, right? Mm -hmm. As I said, for us, our vision is to build the most valued organization in 2030. And we have pivoted that on three levels. First and foremost is people, right? because in our business, for that matter, any business, I would say people are key and paramount. So, uh, so, you know, we want to be the firm for our people in every way. So whether it is a personal side or the professional side and people need to come to us, the question which needs to be asked is, why didn't you join GT? Right. And, and there are places which has happened and we are absolutely determined to do that. And we are putting in a huge number of steps towards that direction. And we can talk a bit more about that. The second one is, of course, uh, we are in service industry. Clients are important, paramount for us. How are we truly delivering value as a mindset? So we want to be judged by the value we deliver, not by the hours we spend on a job. Right. Right. So, so really, we have instituted what we call in the GT way, which is around listening rather than selling. Hmm. So, you know, listen to the person, what they are saying, what they want, and then bring the power of the organization to it rather than saying, hey, I'm an auditor. I'm going to do an audit for you. Yeah. Fundamentally different conversations. Yeah. yeah. And the third one, of course, is, you know, it's equally important is around the whole space of financial metrics. And the one which I really focus on is profitable growth because you can have both and it is creates a virtuous cycle in which, which feeds on itself. Right. And I quite like the idea of uh, you mentioning earlier that an organization can only be as good as its employees. What can you tell us a little bit about the organizational culture? Is this an open door organization? Do you have your subordinates, colleagues just walk into your cabin and uh, start a conversation with you? Oh. Yeah. First and foremost, we don't have offices, uh, individual offices. So we all yeah. sit in an open area. That's so lovely. even as a leadership team, we sit around, we could call it a conferencing table. 
and what it is does as a mindset it is promoting open conversations absolutely as a mindset it is promoting uh, collaboration inclusivity inclusivity right so six seven of us we will sit around the table and we are doing our work if you have a really confidential conversation either with a client which has to be private because the uh, rules or whatever may require so we have other spaces come to a room like this and make that happen right but so that's first and foremost that itself sends a message that we are an open culture right right secondly we are promoting two very key elements is around psychological safety which really means that if i have a point to make i should be able to make that point without fear or oh, it's going to not look good or it's going to hurt my boss or my superior and and by the way I those use those words intentionally because we have done away with those words now wow so it is a coach mm. right so for us coaching is the mantra not reporting or reviewing right so these are little little things the third element is around culture and freezing mm. so every organization has a culture for us our culture is open our culture is providing psychological safety our culture is about thinking about value and everyone including the ceo and me have to go through a culture and freezing workshop which is a two day workshop that is very interesting in fact a lot of organizations in india still do not have an open work culture as you've described it's very promising to learn that organizations in india have an open culture policy and they're trying to do more to make employees yeah. feel more included and heard in their respective organization and that's certainly a step in the right direction my next question to you uh, dipankar is a key aspect of value creation is sustainability how has your organization integrated environmental and social responsibility into its operations to create long term value while addressing global challenges such as climate change again two three angles to that dave uh firstly is from a point of view what we're doing internally as an organization ourselves uh so for us if you look at this office or any new office the first and foremost tenant is that is this a sustainable office which you are creating in every way right yeah. uh, and promoting open culture like for example outside you see there are these places for uh, like an open heating areas right yeah everyone right from a uh, office boy to the ceo sits on the same table and can eat together right these are little things which happen again going back to the point earlier the second one is around we have own goals around net zero so how do we get to net zero and we are we are going down that path probably by 2040 is what we are wanting to go to net zero as an organization ourselves the third point is how are we driving sustainability in everything what we do so whether in our own csr activities and how we are focusing on elements around sustainability the what we are trying to do is to influence certain ecosystems and climate change and resilience is one ecosystem which we want to influence as an organization so from a client perspective and from a service offering perspective what we are focused on is the entire value chain of esg mm -hmm. right from esg strategy at one end to esg assurance on the other and then we are building capabilities and teams which will help organizations achieve their goals whether it's from right. a strategy perspective and implementation perspective and so on and so forth right so it's very important on the all the three elements environment social and governance we would take these three elements and and address and help the country meet its goals fantastic thank you so much for talking about uh, sustainability and what grant thornton is doing uh, to help make Uh, the world a little more sustainable and also help other organizations that are on the path of sustainability achieve their respective esg goals through your services my next question to you is value creation isn't limited to financial returns uh, could you share examples of your organization's efforts to engage with and positively impact the communities in which you operate so uh, absolutely as i said our value creation is on three elements which is people clients and then some financial metrics or other what the the other piece which is because our mission is to make a vibrant bharat right and we are absolutely 
committed to that. And what that really means is that as an Indian multinational ourselves, how are we helping organizations create value and become multinationals in their own right? And that is one of the big mantras which we bring to the table. And like, so how are we creating value for the larger ecosystem? Mm -hmm. And then what we have done is that we have identified five or six ecosystems which relate to creating a vibrant Bharat, which we want to influence. So one I talked about earlier was climate change resilience. Yeah. The second is digital, mm -hmm. right? The third is global competitiveness. Fourth is something like a trust and transparency, right? How do we build trust in capital markets, for example, right? So when you, and the fifth and the most important, at least we are quite passionate about as well, is creating sustainable livelihoods. So in each one of these areas, then we have brought it down to say that, okay, what are we doing to create an impact? Mm -hmm. And our work should become a consequence of what we are trying to achieve here. Absolutely. And that's how we are really creating value. Absolutely. And I'm sure you all are also involved in a lot of CSR efforts uh, in the country. Maybe you could talk to us a little about that. Yeah. So, of course, our own CSR efforts are, uh, are there, whether it is in terms of contributing financially or contributing with time. We actually are much more focused around contributing with time because that's our biggest asset. So encouraging people to do various activities and again, uh, related to environment, I think so that is the, that's a really big one for us, yeah. uh, which we are focused on. Second one is around helping sustainable livelihoods. Got you. So that's the second big piece where our CSR efforts are really, really massive. Also, what we have done from a client perspective is that we are helping organizations. You know, they have CSR budgets. And frankly, that was the same question they had. Hmm. You know, it's not about cutting a check. How are you creating an impact? Impact, yeah. So we have people. So, for example, with one organization, we are doing an extensive five-year work hmm. to create farmer-producer organizations and women-led farmer-producer organizations and create livelihoods at a absolute village level with women in the forefront. Wow. Right. And the impact it is creating is huge, especially in the areas of Maharashtra and everywhere else where we are really focused on. We are probably connected to around 20% of FPOs in the country now. Wow. That's fantastic work in on the CSR front and again ties back to everything that you want to do to give back to the communities yes. where you live. My next question to you, Dipankar, employee engagement and development play a crucial role in value creation. How does your organization foster a culture of learning and growth? And how has this contributed to its overall success and value creation? You may have answered this question to a certain degree uh, over the course of this interview, uh, but I'd like you to go a little deeper. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Dave, again, uh, LND is something I'm very personally uh, very passionate about, right? Because uh, I think so the more we invest in our people, right, the, the better returns there would be. Not only in terms of financial metrics, that is a but obvious one, but also in terms of creating a workforce which is ready for the future. Which is aligned. Whether they stay with us, of course we want them, but they will be people who will go. But, you know, they go a better professional tomorrow. We are helping even there. Absolutely. Right. So learning and development and a curated learning and development program is absolutely a necessity, frankly, for any organization. So we have a very senior person, a part level person, 100 percent dedicated on L&D for our own people. And right from our technical skills to the soft skills to uh, to personal development skills, now to the latest or the new uh, technology skills like Gen AI and everything else. How are we upping upping the skill set quotient of our people right from an analyst to the partner is that ecosystem which we work on. That's fascinating and thank you so much for talking a little more about how you all help your employees progress and how you all make them better prepared for the future, Dipankar. I have a couple of questions for you which are off topic, sure. uh, but it uh, gives us a glimpse into who you are as a person, uh, some, of the, some of your likes and leadership strategies. Uh, my first question to you is, if you could have dinner with one business leader, living or deceased, who would it be and why? There are so many, but, but the person I would love to have dinner with, with Mr. Azim Premji. I worked with him uh, on engagements uh, in the past and I have always admired him mm. for his style of leadership, right? Yeah. Uh, there's a 100% commitment, 
absolutely you get a lot of leaders but he's also someone who's transformed an organization from a dominant fmcg style organizing nothing wrong but to uh, that time to convert that fully into a technology on the leading technology players in the country yeah. and at the same time absolutely being uncompromising on the values so he would be the one fantastic thank you for sharing that with our viewers uh, my next question to you if you could describe your leadership style in three words and three words only um, passion uh, integrity uh, working smart okay and a follow up to that if you had to uh, talking about leadership styles uh, what is important as a quality in a leader and uh, how do you embody it on a day to day basis at the workplace so uh, i think so for me as i said uh, passion what you bring to the table on a day in day out basis is the most important thing how much are you committed to what you're doing right yeah Uh, and that reflects hmm. in how you approach your work on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Yeah, there'll be some frustration, there'll be some ups and downs, but are you getting up in the morning ready to go and you know deal with whatever you want to or need to because you have a passion? The second one is very being very clear on where you want to achieve. So for us. I am at least very clear we want to become the most valued firm by 2030. So that's a goal which resonates with me every day in the morning. Yeah. Okay. And what am I doing for that today? Where am I going on that, right? And third but most important in our people connected to our people and our clients, right? So that is so so very important and how you're helping your people further do better than what they did yesterday to you know that because alone there's only that much you can do yeah. it is the team so yeah. in our world that is what really matters so how are you helping create a top notch team and working together to deliver value this is to me the three four tenets and you'll also uh, you know a lot of leaders say empathy is very important when it comes to quality leadership uh, what are your thoughts around uh, being empathetic at the workplace so it's basically being a uh, people centric versus business and profitability centric as i said right uh, about working with your people helping them become a better person better professional every day yeah. and spending time with them you cannot do that mm -hmm. unless or until you are empathetic to their needs to their concerns to their stresses uh, to their aspirations yeah. right yeah there is an element of business metrics it cannot be done away with or shy away from right at the end of the day we got to make money to pay uh, our people right? right we got to make money to reinvest in our business but financial metrics are not the driver is i believe financial metrics are the consequence yeah and when you look at that with then you are doing things so if you do the right things financial metrics will happen that will and follow that's a that consequence follows, yeah. so that is and for us as i said you know just being with the people nothing else just get your people equation right i think you will get most things right it means an opportunity thank you thank you for saying that and my last and final question to you if you had to choose one book that has had the most impact on your leadership and business philosophy what would it be and why the quite a few books which have influenced me but the one which has stayed with me quite a lot especially in the indian context mm -hmm. has been the subtle lot art of dharma by gurcharan das right fantastic and what about it in particular really stuck with you i think so understanding and appreciating that uh, a context uh, to any issue is very important and their book actually elucidates how the uh, the cultural elements of india and how indians think and operate is slightly different than the anglo-saxon way and we need to appreciate that in yeah. different cultures i think that that has always stayed with me and and then modulating your own uh, approach and appreciating the needs or the way in, in another uh, person may think would be very different than you so in appreciating that and that has always stayed with me Thank you so much Dipankar it was lovely having you I'm sure our viewers are going to learn so much from this interaction that we've had uh, we'd love to do this with you again and uh, thank you so much Thank you thank you very much Dave for having me once again Thank you thank Thanks you a lot. Bye. Thank you